Welcome to worship on this beautiful day in Bozeman. A uh, special welcome to those of you who are guests with us here. We're really glad you are here. Good morning to those of you who are joining us online. Thanks for joining us that way. I know we've got a handful of folks who are doing stuff up at Sweet Pea already this morning, so uh, we keep them in our prayers as we gather here as well. Hopefully everybody got an announcement sheet when you came in. There should be a pencil in your pew in the racks in front of you, and you can use that to fill out our little attendance sheet. You can tear it off and then place it in the offering plates later in the service when those go by. Um, you can also uh, list a prayer request there if you have one or if you'd like to get our weekly email newsletter and you're not getting it right now. That's a great way to communicate with the church office. We appreciate you uh, doing that. Again, you can fill it out now and put it in the offering plate later in the service. If you need a large print bulletin, we have them. If it's hard for you to read the projection up on the wall, just wave or head on back and Don will give you a large print bulletin. I invite you to stand as we begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who looks upon us in compassion, forgives our sin and heals our lives. Amen. As we gather, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. To you, O oh God, all hearts are open. To you, all desires known. We come to you confessing our sins. Forgive us in your mercy and remember us in your love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth. For the sake of your goodness in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news. As tender as parent to child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from west, so far God removes your sin from you, renewing your life through Jesus Christ. Blessed be God who crowns us with mercy and love. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Our gathering song is in the purple hymnal, if you want to look at the music, number 981. It's a call and response, so Ian will do the leader parts, and we will all sing the congregation parts, which are marked with a C up on the wall. All who are thirsty, come to the water. All who are hungry, come here and eat. All who are thirsty, come to the waters, there's enough for all. All who are thirsty, come to the waters, all who are hungry, come here and eat. All who are thirsty, come to the waters, there's enough for all. All who are thirsty, come to the waters. All who are hungry, come here and eat. All who are thirsty, come to the waters, there's enough for all. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. For peace, O oh Lord, to you we pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For healing of our hearts and lives. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For justice in this broken world, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. For hope when our dreams run dry, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Be with us 
us throughout our days. Voices we raise, we gather together in this time and place, giving all glory to God. By your grace we are set free, we proclaim this mystery. Jesus risen from the dead, we worship you and see. With all of creation, our voices we raise, we gather together in this time and place, giving all glory to God. We give all glory to God. The Lord be with you. Together we pray. Glorious God. Your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. I just got back from a retreat about preaching and liturgy, so hold on to your pews. <laughs> a reading from Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money, and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the prophets, to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you, have, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Word of God, word of life. We are now going to read Psalm 145 uh, responsibly. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord is good to all. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you. And you open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways. 
The Lord is near who all, to all who call on him. To all who call on him, to truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. And all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. A reading now from Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of God, word of life. I invite the children to come up for our children message this morning. You can come sit on the chancel steps right in front of me. Good morning. How are you all this morning? Good? Well, that's good. Did you have a good weekend? Yeah. I have something in here. Should we count what's in here? Okay, I'm going to dump it out and you guys have to help me count, okay? What is it though? Bread, yeah. One loaf of bread. Yep. Three loaves of bread. Four loaves of bread. Yep, five loaves of bread. And what is this? Two fish. One fish? <laughs> Two fish. Yeah. Do you think that's enough to feed all of us up here? Or all of us in the congregation? No. I don't think so either. But you know what? In today's gospel story, we hear a story about Jesus and how there's a huge crowd of people, more than here in the congregation today, and he blesses the food and it multiplies. There becomes more fish and more loaves than just the two and five than it started with. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. How do you think the disciples felt, though, at first when they were told to feed the people and they only had two fish and five lo loaves of bread? Jesus was magic? Yeah. <laughs> but how do you think the disciples felt when they had this much food and, like, panicked? Yeah. How would you feel if you were in that position? Do you think you'd feel the same way? How else do you think you'd feel? Or the, the disciples felt? Hungry? Yeah, I would feel hungry too. <laughs> Sometimes in life there are things, not necessarily just food, but maybe time or energy or attention where we don't feel like we have enough. But what can we do? Multiply it, yeah. Or what about pray? We could pray, yeah, and ask God. We can take what we have, we can ask for God's help and direction, and we can listen and act on God's directions. You ready to pray? Let us pray. You can repeat after me. Dear God, Thank you for the miracle that Jesus did. 
And thank you that he provided food for all the people and that he provides for us. In your name we pray. Amen. You can all head back to your seats for the gospel acclamation. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> On that great and glorious day, I'm going to have some words with Matthew. <laughs> Dude, what? <laughs> Beloved of God, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. It's good to be all back together again here. As much as I love the service up at the Hyalite Reservoir every summer, uh, it always feels a little bit weird to me knowing that while I am leading worship up there, Pastor Grant was leading worship here, and so then I just miss you. <laughs> so uh, it's weird to have our congregation split. Um, I always miss the folks not gathering in the place I am, so I'm glad to be all back. For those of you who worshiped up at Highlight last week, I wonder if you have any more thoughts on Jesus' kingdom parables. We read a bunch of them last week, and they started off, the kingdom of heaven is like, and Jesus filled in that blank in a variety of different ways. And we pondered for a few minutes how we might fill in that blank if we were going to offer a new parable like one of those scribes bringing out the new treasures along with the old. Anybody think of any other ones? The kingdom of heaven is like cilantro in your garden. Because it tastes like soap? No. no because, it takes over. because it takes over. So it's like mustard in that way. Yeah. The, somebody, I don't even know who it was because they were off to my right and I wasn't looking that way when they said it. But someone last week said the kingdom of heaven is like glitter. And I have been thinking about that one all week. Because it's true. It gets everywhere. <laughs> And it brings joy, and it shines, but usually in small bits, right? Like you catch it out of the corner of your eye, right? I think about I, that's I, so. Whoever it was, if you know, if it was you, thank you. If you know who it was, tell that person thank you. Uh, I've been thinking about that one this week. 
Today, we move into the 14th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, and we see Jesus at work among the crowds. As the day wore on, the disciples came to Jesus and tried to get him to send the crowds away, right? They had perceived a problem. They didn't bring the problem to Jesus. They brought their perceived solution to Jesus and just wanted him to follow their directions. Things don't always go so great when we do that, right? The disciples went to Jesus and tried to get him to send the crowds away back to the towns and the villages closest to where they were gathered in the deserted place. It was late. The markets would be closing. The disciples reasoned, not unrealistically, that the people needed to get back to town to buy some food. The disciples cared about the people, but they didn't know what to do about, what to do about them, really. Certainly there wasn't enough food there. So the disciples went to Jesus because they wanted Jesus to fix the problem. When Andrea asked the children, how would you feel or how do you think the disciples felt? And I couldn't tell who answered it, but the answer was panicked. Yeah, right? I'm guessing the disciples were a little overwhelmed. The crowds were too big. The problem was just too big. When we look around at all the problems of our world today, we also might find them overwhelming. I know anxiety tends to run high for a lot of folks these days. There's political polarization, climate change, systemic racism, global migration, not enough affordable housing in Bozeman. We can identify with the disciples on this one, I'm guessing. The problems are too many and we don't know what to do and we would just like it, thank you very much, if God would fix it. If we pause and breathe way down deep, what we might recognize is fear. Fear that the problems have gotten out of hand. Fear that it's all overwhelming now and it's only going to get worse. It's like we just collectively want to pull the covers over our heads and have God come up with the solution. When we read this story, it helps maybe to back up a little bit to recognize that Jesus wasn't in like peak condition himself. What it's, what's really easy to notice if we don't back up is how the story begins. Because it begins like this. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. So what question does that sentence prompt you to ask? When Jesus heard what? <laughs> right? What Jesus had just heard is that his cousin, John the Baptist, had been beheaded. And that John's head had been delivered on a platter to Herod. That casts a different shadow over the story of the feeding of the 5,000 in Matthew. The thing that Jesus had just heard was that John the, was of John the Baptist's murder by King Herod at a feast? Right, you remember this story? The juxtaposition could not be more ironic or powerful. At one moment, Matthew invites us to focus on one more episode from the lifestyle of the rich and shameless. And in the next, he draws our attention to a scene portraying poor, sick, and hungry crowds looking for relief. It's like switching channels from the Kardashians to a news report on immigrant children stranded at the border. Matthew is indicating by these contrasting scenes just what kind of God Jesus is, who this Father is, who Jesus is in the flesh. It's easy to miss it, that Jesus has just been given this shocking news. And so he withdrew to a deserted place was it to get away from the horror? Was it to try to find a place of peace and calm? Was it that he sensed in his, that his own life was even in more danger now because the powers of the state would soon be after him too? Certainly his message threatened to turn their world upside down. Love instead of military force? Enough food for everyone instead of food only for those who earned it or could steal it or could just exploit their way to it. Compassion instead of fear and hate. 
One of my favorite seminary professors has gone back to serving a congregation in the Twin Cities, and he used to write a blog for preachers every week. And in a post on this Matthew passage, he wrote to, to preachers, to pastors, do me a favor and resist the pedestrian temptation to call Jesus' feeding of the 5,000 a miracle. He says, it's not that I don't understand the appeal of describing the event as a miracle. It's in all four Gospels and all that. It's the only of Jesus' miraculous things that show up in all four Gospels. And he says he understands that not calling, you know, that it isn't inaccurate to call it a miracle. Because what Jesus does is rather wondrous. But Dave Lowe says, I nevertheless worry that by drawing attention to Jesus' act of feeding these crowds, we, may act, we actually may overlook the more significant miracles that take place in the story Matthew narrates. Here's the thing. While we may debate whether Jesus suspended the natural order to feed 5,000 plus women and children, or whether his example merely prompted the crowd to share what they already had, this isn't the question that was the concern of the earliest Christians. Keep in mind that Matthew told us in the first chapter that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. And for the one who made the world out of nothing and created light from darkness, multiplying some fish and loaves was no major feat. Moreover, Jesus wasn't the only one living in the first century that people claimed was working wonders. Nor was he the only one that some people hailed as a Messiah. He wasn't even the only one to claim to be the Son of God. Goodness gracious, most of the Caesars did that. Neither Jesus nor his early followers imagined that stories about wondrous acts would convince people of Jesus' divine origins. Rather, the wonders Jesus performed were, as John is most consistently adamant about in his gospel account, the wonders, of, the wonders that Jesus performed were always signs of the character of the God whose presence Jesus bears. They point beyond themselves to God. Which is what brings us to the first of two miracles described in this story. The point isn't what Jesus does. But why? Because the character of the God Jesus reveals and represents is captured in a single word, compassion. Matthew says that when Jesus saw the great crowd that followed him, he had compassion on them. And so he healed their sick, tended their needs, and shared with them his presence. And then when evening came and they found themselves without food, he fed them. In the Mediterranean world in the first century, gods were not normally supposed to care about people like those desperate crowds. The gods of the ancient philosophers, for instance, were considered dispassionate, and so were regularly, regularly referred to with names like the unmoved mover or first cause. Not exceedingly personal, right? And at the other end of the spectrum, the gods of the Greek and Roman empires were notorious for using humans as playthings and for ordering the world to their whims. At best, in the ancient pagan world, gods were supposed to take the side of the rich and powerful, to stand with people like Herod and his well-fed party guests, sanctioning their exploitation of the poor and even the bloody murder of a truth teller like John. Those ancient pagan gods were definitely not known for siding with the oppressed, the ordinary, the downtrodden, or the hungry. But that's what happens here. As Jesus renews, embodies, and fulfills the consistent call of the God of Israel to feed the hungry. One author says it might be helpful not to picture Jesus as the one in this story who is serenely above it all, pulling all of the necessary levers behind the scenes to generate an abundance of bread and fish. Maybe instead we need to see Jesus as the one with red-rimmed eyes and tear-stained cheeks, whose hands are trembling for the sorrow of it all. Out of his own scarcity and out of his own emotional train wreck, Jesus manages to bring forth an abundance of life and joy and he moves his disciples to be part of it. 
Which brings us to the second miracle of the story. Jesus uses the disciples, even when they would rather look after themselves, to tend to the needs of these thousands of men and women and children. Did you notice that? They say, we've got some fish and some bread, and Jesus says, bring it here. And then using words and actions, foreshadowing the Last Supper, Matthew depicts what happens when you move from a worldview of scarcity. We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish to one of abundance. Thank you, God, for these five loaves and these fish. Whatever their initial skepticism or doubt, the disciples are caught up in Jesus' words of abundance and gratitude and distribute what they have and participate in the wonder and joy that all ate and were filled. God used even these reluctant disciples to care for the poor and the hungry, the ones God loves so much. They gave what they had to Jesus, and Jesus took it, blessed it, broke it, and gave it back to them. And then they fed the crowds. That miracle continues. God still cares deeply and passionately for those who are most vulnerable, the poor, the stranger, the hungry. And God continues to use disciples to care for them. That would be us. When we contribute to the work of ELCA World Hunger, which we have the opportunity, I mean, we can always do that online, right? But we do that collectively on the first Sunday of every month. We have the big fast food cups. And we give it, and God receives it. God takes it and blesses it and breaks it and gives it back to the church, which then puts it to work in the world to care for those most in need. We do it when we give through ELCA World Hunger, or when we deliver Meals on Wheels, or volunteer for the food bank. Last week on one of my pastor pop-ups, I got to do a ride-along with Hannah Goman, and we had a, a farewell and Godspeed blessing for Hannah and her spouse Calvin a couple weeks ago. Uh, he graduated with his PhD and got a job teaching up at Carroll and Helena, so they're moving, and Hannah's gonna graduate with her PhD in December, but she can write from anywhere at this point because all the research has been done. But for more than three years of her grad school career, every Monday morning, Hannah volunteered from 9 to 11, driving one of those big vans for the food bank. She had her own route of four stops to rescue, the rescue van, the rescue trucks, to rescue food that would otherwise have been thrown away. Hannah's route was Smith's, and then Starbucks, and Winco, and Costco. Let me tell you, I got a workout loading that truck. <laughs> on the picture that was in Friday's email and that was posted on Facebook, you can see Hannah's all smiling and my face is like bright red and I'm sweating. Because she was up in the truck and that day Costco donated, it was like 12 boxes of limes and each box weighed 40 pounds. And so I'm whew, up onto the scale and oh my word. But God worked, worked through Hannah to make sure that people in our community would be fed. It happens when we give to and through Family Promise. If you've watched the news in the last week, you've seen that Family Promise just bought a great big new campus, so they no longer have to rent emergency shelter. It's gonna take a lot of work to get that thing ready. We're invited to help. Maybe it's dusting. Maybe it's moving furniture. God uses our hands to share that compassion in the world. We could keep going just with the things that we do collectively. And I know that you all also have the ways that you are at work in the world sharing God's compassion. Lutheran World Relief school kits, serving at fork and spoon, serving as a cap mentor in the schools. Be on the lookout this week and notice how God works through you and through others to care for the vulnerable. And then send me an email or a text message. Hey, Lindeen, I know you're still thinking about glitter, but I noticed this week that God is sharing, that, that God's compassion is at work in the world in this way. 
Friends, God has compassion on the weak and the vulnerable. We saw it, we see it in the story of the feeding of the 5,000. And we see it today. Because the weak and the vulnerable includes you and me. We see that compassion of God at work in the feeding of the crowds and most clearly on the cross where Jesus died and in the empty tomb from which he was raised. God forgives our sin and then sends us into the world free to love as God loves, to be compassionate as God is compassionate. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing. invite the baptismal party to come on up. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? As you bring her to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed and the Ten Commandments, place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture her in faith and prayer, so that Emily may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help her grow in the Christian faith and life? Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Emily in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? And you, oh hi Ian, let me sm smack you. There you go. 
People of God, do you promise to support Emily and pray for her in her new life in Christ? We do. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty. Oh, hold on. I totally jumped ahead, didn't I? We'll start again. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raised us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. All right, Emily, are you ready? Are you ready? There you go. Emily Blake. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Emily with the gift of your Holy Spirit the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Emily Blake, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Let us well, oh, nope, Ian gets to light a candle first. Now, let us welcome the newly baptized. Emily, we welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. Friends, we have a new sibling in Christ. This is Emily. Emily, do you want to come over here and wave? Are you feeling shy? Do you want to come? These people are all your family now. Do you want to say hi? <laughs> Maybe later you can give everybody a high five if you want. All right, and I have a couple things. Here's a book for you so you can remember today. And here is a little super soft blanket and it's blue to remind you of the baptism water. See how cozy that is? 
It might be too warm to wear today. There you go. <laughs> all right. We will invite you all to stand. We'll sing a baptismal song as they return to their seats. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. You gather your church together by the Holy Spirit. Inspire all the baptized to proclaim your abundant love throughout the world. Guide us in the mission of the gospel through word and deed. Bless all our siblings in Christ, especially First Presbyterian Church here in Bozeman and Trinity Lutheran Church in Shoto, St. John's Lutheran Church in Great Falls, St. Paul Lutheran Church in Cutbank, the Northeastern Ohio Synod of the ELCA, and the Evangelical Church of the Augsburg Confession in Poland. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. You cherish your creation from the smallest microbe to the largest mountain. Protect fragile ecosystems, send favorable weather, supply food and water to nourish creatures, and raise us up to care for all you have created. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. You desire peace and justice in the world. Instill within all political leaders that same desire. Support the work of international peace organizations and provide relief for those in war-torn and violent areas, especially Ukraine, Niger, Haiti, Lebanon, and Sudan. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. You comfort those who are hurting, accompany those who are alone, heal those who are sick, provide for all who hunger or thirst, console the bereaved, bring joy to the sorrowful, and attend to all who call on you. We pray especially for Lane, Florica, Laverne, Amy, Larry, Patty, Luke, Margaret, Frankie, Chris, Bob, and those we name aloud now. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. You place us within communities for mutual support and love. Reveal yourself to us in worship, fellowship, and ministry with our neighbors. Help us share your abundance with all who hunger and your compassion with all we meet. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. The prayers of the congregation are invited. For the unspoken hopes of our hearts, hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. You have placed before us examples of faithful living who have witnessed to your promises. Inspire us by their lives of service and dedication to be your hands and feet in the world. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, 
Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with those near you. Peace be with you. Sorry, I almost took out. That's fine. I'm used to it. I live with a rather remote of human. You may be seated. I invite you to continue greeting one another and uh, building each other up uh, after worship just across the way in the social hall for a time of fellowship. So hope you'll, you're able to stick around for that this morning. If you'd pull out your announcement sheets, if you haven't already filled out the thing, do that now. Uh, to highlight just a couple uh, of things, we will pass again the, the hunger cups uh, during the offering this morning. Next Sunday, we'll have another CTK pop-up ensemble. So if you are uh, a musician who can sight read a hymn, you're invited to bring your instrument at nine and we'll rehearse and then help lead worship next Sunday at 10. It's not too late to register for VBS, but it's coming up, starts really soon, like a week from tomorrow, yay. Um, Friday, we have another all ages game night and potluck. So that starts at six o'clock, bring whatever you wanna bring. I think last month, Pastor Grant made the announcement, like said that if everybody brings barbecue chips, then we'll have barbecue chips for dinner. And people at my house said, can we please not get barbecue chips? <laughs> so um, it, it turned out great last, last month. We trust it will be again this Friday. A week from Wednesday is family movie and pizza night. Uh, that's Wednesday, the August 16th. So you can learn more about that and a whole bunch of ways to serve. With Family Promise, the campus ministry Rummage sale is coming up soon too. We'll, we're collecting already for Lutheran World Relief school kits, for MSU student welcome bags, lots of ways to plug in. So commend that to you. We will receive uh, this morning's offering of gifts and tithes as well as our world hunger offering. And in case you're thinking, you know, we've had a couple of baptisms in the last couple of weeks. I'd like to think more about that. There's a little blue handout on the big table in the entryway, you can grab one.
Together we pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us lift our hearts to the Lord. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. This is the Lord's Supper that we share, and all are welcome at the table. Uh, come forward at the direction of the ushers. The center server will have gluten-free wafers. The next servers will have regular wafers, and then trays of red wine and white grape juice. will sing as we are served. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come for all is ready.
Please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Together we pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we have welcomed a sister this morning, we are also saying farewell and Godspeed to a family of siblings. Eaglemans, come on up. They're moving, <laughs> right? And woohoo, because Allison got a great new job. So it's bittersweet as farewells and Godspeeds often are, um, but we will be um, commending them to a future congregation in Wisconsin, moving back in the direction of home. The Lord be with you. With you. Tyler, Allison, August, and Margaret. As you leave our community of faith, Christ the King Lutheran Church, we wish to bid you farewell. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you a member of his church. When you came to this community, we rejoice to welcome you into the mission we share as the people of God. In this community, you have come to know and to share in God's loving purpose for you and for all creation. God has blessed you in this community, and God has blessed us through you. Let us pray. Eternal God. We thank you for Tyler, Allison, August, and Margaret, and for the time we have shared with them. As they have been a blessing to us, so now send them forth to be a blessing to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Ah, you could probably send them with applause, send them with hugs later if that's your game. <laughs> Yay, we're gonna miss you, sorry. Receive the benediction. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. We sing.
are we? We are a Christian community practicing discipleship as we worship, learn, and serve. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.